Okay, good morning and uh, welcome everyone to BC214. And uh, this is likely to be our last and last lecture for this course in uh, developing the human spirit. And um, we're going to be uh, looking into the last lesson, just looking, yeah. Uh, looking at the last lesson uh, of this course, um, imparting spirit to spirit. Let me just go ahead and share. Okay. All right. Last week we covered seven functions of the spirit. Today we're going to talk about imparting spirit to spirit. Okay, uh, let me just pause and may I request somebody to please pray and then we can start. Somebody can pray and then we will start, please. Could someone pray? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, my Lord. We surrender this class into your hands as we pass it into your hands. So, Lord, give us regulations. Give us to the Lord's answer. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. So, thank you. Thank you, Aaron. So, we... Um, last week, we talked about the seven functions of the human spirit. And uh, today, we are going to cover the last chapter, the last lesson, which is imparting spirit to spirit. So as we talk about developing the human spirit, uh, in this course so far, we've talked about things that we do uh, in our journey with God as we Mm, as we walk with God and how we can nurture and develop our spirit, make ourselves strong spiritually, and also be aware of the faculties of the human spirit, because it is through the faculties of the spirit that the human spirit, that the Holy Spirit speaks to us, ministers to us. And then we also must be aware of the functions of the spirit that means this is what our human spirit is capable of doing and so we we um, together we uh, uh, in our spirit we rise up to do these things so we talked about the um, functions of the spirit but what we want to emphasize in this last lesson is that we can also receive from others and we can give to others in the spirit so just like in the natural you know if i have something and i have extra of something i can always give to somebody in the natural um so also in the spirit if i if god has given me something i can impart that spiritually to somebody else that means i can pass it on into their spirit and similarly i can receive from others in the spirit and so there is both the imparting and receiving. And we must understand uh, how that takes place. Uh, there is, there is uh, a certain criteria or uh, a process involved through which things can be imparted in the spirit or received in the spirit. So uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3, when Paul writes to the Corinthians, he tells them, he says, you are an epistle written by us. So you are a letter that we've written. So he's just using the picture of, uh, of writing a letter. And he tells the Corinthians, you are a letter that we have written. And then he, and he goes on in verse 3, he says, you know, but we have not written it 
are on tablets of stone, but we've written it in your heart. And we've not written it with ink, but we've written it by the Spirit of the Living God. So it's a very interesting thing. So Paul is recognizing that uh, ministry is really your, you are, in a sense, you're writing upon the hearts of people. Uh, you're writing something that will remain in them, in their spirit. But you're not writing with ink. And this is uh, not writing by human means, but it is by the Holy Spirit, and that we are writing it into their hearts. Right? And he also says, uh, you are an epistle written in our hearts. In other words, it's bidirectional. You know, the Holy Spirit is helping us write into your heart. But even before that, God put you in our hearts. So you are in our hearts. God has placed you in our hearts. There's something in our hearts for you, uh, compassion, uh, a calling, a grace given in our hearts for you. And so this is, it's both ways. God has put the Corinthians in Paul's heart, and God has given Paul the ability by the Spirit to write into their hearts. So he's talking about something in the spiritual realm uh, that, that's happening, not something you know in the natural. So uh, we see that this is possible, that we are able to write into the hearts of people by the Holy Spirit. Uh, we see uh, other examples that we are listed here in Romans chapter 2, verse 11. Um, the Apostle Paul is telling the Romans, you know, when I come to you, I want to impart to you some spiritual gift. So he's, so he's telling them, I, 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 when I come and visit you, uh, it's not just, you know, hi, how are you? Uh, how are you doing? It's not like a casual, friendly visit kind of thing. Although that may be there in the natural, but in the spiritual, he's saying, I want to impart to you some spiritual gift. So there's something he wants to give it, give to them. But it's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual giving. Right? Uh, it could be revelation from God. It could be uh, the expression of the gifts of the Spirit, uh, so on. Okay. And you also look, at, you see, in, in, in the life of Timothy, as Paul has written to him in both the epistles in First Timothy chapter 4, verse 18, and Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, um, in both these places, Paul is reminding Timothy, in First Timothy 4, Timothy he says, you know, uh, I want to remind you about the gifts, that, the gift that was given to you through the laying on of the hands of the presbytery, that means the elders, through prophecy. So when the elders laid hands on Timothy and prophesied, there was a there was gift released into Timothy. And then he writes again in 2 Timothy 1 6, he says, Stir up the gift of God which is in you. Stir up the gift of God which is in you. So Gifts were, are given, we can see a gifts were given through the laying on of hands, and through prophecy, but it needed to be developed, it needed to be stirred up, it needed to be activated, as opposed to, okay, I got a gift and it's just automatically working. So we, we, we learned something here about impartation, that sometimes we can receive impartation, but it can be neglected and uh, it needs to be developed, it needs to be stirred up. We also see, um, on the other hand, uh, this whole process of nurturing others spiritually. Right? Because in, in the New Testament, we see Paul telling the Corinthians, you know, 1 Corinthians 4.15, he tells them, I have begotten you through the gospel. That means I've given birth to you. He also talks about how he wants to nurture them. Or, he, you know, First Corinthians 3, he says, you're like babies uh, and then you need to be nurtured. Or to the Galatians, he says, I want Christ to be formed in you. Um, and to Timothy, 
he calls him his own son in the faith. And so there is that whole nurturing, birthing and nurturing that we see in New Testament scripture. And I've just referenced, uh, made some few references. So this also is a spiritual process, right? That is, spiritually, we are developing people, we are nurturing people, we are giving into their lives. Uh, uh, that means there is something happening in the spiritual realm. So the question is, you know, whether it's imparting or birthing or nurturing, you know, what, what are some of the things we can say, uh, how this happens? Uh, and and I, I am also, uh, uh, you know, sharing this mainly because uh, sometimes, you know, we read the scriptures like First Timothy 4.18 and 2 Timothy 1.6 and we think, well, it's only about laying hands. So you know, somebody lays hands on me and that's it, I can become a spiritual giant or, you know, I have all these anointing or I have all these gifts, I receive some spiritual impartation. Well, uh, we need to understand it correctly that, um, so it is a mistake here, this is Romans 1.11, not Romans 2.11, Romans 1 11. Um, uh, so we need to understand this correctly that there is an impartation that takes place, that means God can cause spiritual things to come into our lives through other people. But how it happens, in what measure it happens, and how it is nurtured and developed, there are some things that affect all of that. And uh, that's what we want to uh, pay attention to and be mindful of, right? So uh, I, I just put it in these kinds of statements here just to make it clear uh, for our benefit. And uh, you know, I'll just go through these statements. Uh, and this is just to summarize what we see in Scripture about receiving something spiritually in, in the Spirit. So impartation is always aligned to God's call and assignment on your life. So, you know, when we talk about uh, something being given to us, right, um, we can receive, for example, we can receive teaching, we can receive knowledge, uh, we can receive revelation. Uh, you know, so for example, you're attending Bible college and you're, you're listening to so many faculty What's happening? Spiritually, things are being given to you. Spiritual knowledge is being given to you. Spiritual revelation is being given to you. Um, uh, practical things about ministry is being given to you. So those things are being put into your life spiritually. That's happening. But to receive an impartation of anointing or spiritual gifts, that also will happen but that will happen aligned to God's call and assignment on your life. So whatever is given to you is going to be aligned to what God's called you to do in life, right? So as I just put an example here. Suppose God has called somebody to be a teacher. I, uh, he can't go to somebody who's an anointed worship leader and say, you know, you lay hands on me and I'll receive uh, anointing to be a worship leader or I'll receive the gift to be a worship leader, or receive the call or you know, to be a, become a worship leader. That won't happen. Why? Because for you, for this person, God's called this person to be a teacher. This person, God's called and gifted that person to be a worship leader. So the calling of God and the gift that God has given will determine the kind of anointing and grace that is imparted that one can receive. So keep that in mind. In other words, uh, impartation anointing is not going to put me into a different calling or put me into a different assignment. That's not going to happen because the call and assignment comes from God. The impartation is given to help us move further in the call and further in the assignment. Second statement we can say from Scripture is that uh, impartation often takes place in a measure, right? So, yeah, there may be times when one person may receive a full measure of what the other person is carrying. 
There may be times where one person may receive a double pour measure of what the other person's carrying. But th those are, you know, what we would say exceptions, that those are something that God can do it, of course. But those are not something you're seeing, you know, happen every day and to every other person. No. Usually, impartation happens in a measure. So, example, when Moses and the 70 elders, the anointing that was on Moses was taken and put up on 70 other people, but they, they, they didn't end up with 71 prophets like Moses. No. There was Moses, there were 70 elders. But the 70 elders received an impartation from Moses. But it was in a measure. What was the measure? For them to do what God had called them to do, which was to be leaders <clears throat> over smaller groups of people, where there were 50 or 100, and, and, and they received the anointing to do that. I think what Moses and Joshua Joshua actually stood in the shoes of Moses. That means he took over the leadership from Moses, but he didn't have the same kind of anointing as Moses did. Why? Because the calling was different. Moses had to bring them out of slavery, across the wilderness, to the land of promise. Joshua's calling was go possess the land of promise, fight battles, conquer cities, overthrow our enemies. Calling was different. Take, possess the inheritance. Moses, lead them to the inheritance. So whatever these people needed, God anointed them. And even though there was an impartation from Moses to Joshua, what was imparted was aligned to Joshua's calling. And you can read that in uh, Deuteronomy, the last chapter, where it says that, Joshua received the spirit of wisdom from Moses. So that was what was imparted to Joshua. He needed wisdom to be the leader and to lead the people to possess the inheritance. Right? Think about Elijah and John the Baptist. Uh, the Bible says that John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elijah. But John the Baptist didn't go about doing miracles. But as we know, the prophet Elijah did mighty miracles. But the Bible says, you know, John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elijah. So he came in what aspect, in what dimension to turn the people, the hearts of the people to God. Elijah on the Mount, on Mount Carmel turned the hearts of the people to God. They cried out, the Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God. John the Baptist also turned the heart of the people to God. But he did it in a very different way, uh, not through the miracles, but through the preaching and, and through the things God, God had called him to do. But the result was the same. The hearts of the people were turned to God. So you see that impartation takes place in a measure. How that is expressed is, of course, aligned to the calling of the person who receives that impartation. Uh, number three, whatever you receive through impartation, it has to be nurtured and developed, right? So that's why Paul tells Timothy, and I want you to stir up the gift of God. Don't neglect the gift of God. Exercise the gift of God. So uh, obviously, if Timothy didn't do that, whatever was given to him spiritually, was what was imparted to him spiritually, would just be neglected. It won't develop. Right? And Taking, building on that same truth, we can go beyond what was imparted because whatever is given to us is in a seed form. So that means you can receive a measure and then as you develop that measure, it can go, grow, 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 and you can go beyond even what was given to you, right? So what is imparted to you is not your ceiling. It's not your limit. It's not the limit that is set on your life. But it's just something added to you, which if you develop, and along with all the other things that God imparts, you're going to grow both in measure and realm, uh, in, 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 in the size and in the capacity of the ministry and the calling. And number five, you can receive impartation from more than one minister of God. 
Um, so this is important because sometimes people think, oh, I can only receive from one man of God. No, no. Uh, God uses many people to impart into our life. So you can actually receive from more than one minister of God. Uh, so what determines what I receive through impartation? Well, on my side, on the person who is receiving, it's hunger and it's God's calling or God's assignment. That means I must be hungry. I should say, God, I want to receive through that other person or what is in the other person. I want it. And it should be aligned to the call of God on my life. So as long as it's aligned to God's calling on my life, I can pull, I can hunger for it, and I can receive through the other person. So that those are two very important factors to keep in mind. Also, uh, we did say that Impartation can take place in a moment. Somebody can lay hands on you, and in a moment, something can be given to you. Yes. But we also see in the Bible that the normal process is there is association and honor. That means you associate with that person. So in the Old Testament, uh, the sons of the prophets, they served with Elijah the prophet, or Joshua served with Moses. Elisha served with Elijah. In the New Testament, the apostles served with Jesus. Timothy, Titus, and many others, they served with the apostle Paul. So there was association. When I say serve, it means they, they, they spent time together, they, they were receiving, they were listening, they were observing, all of that. That's association. Right? And the second is there's respect, there's honor. right? So when you honor something, it, it's positioning yourself to receive it. If I don't honor it, if I don't honor what's on their lives, I don't honor the person, I can't receive through that person. right? So these are two things. Uh, that we see in scripture that association honor. Now, it doesn't mean that we have to put that person in a pedestal, right? So I'm not saying, you know, you should make uh, whoever you want to receive, you know, someone big in your life become, you know, no. Just having normal respect, honor in your heart and praising God for that person. Yeah, that's that's all we're talking about. We're not saying, you know, put that person in a pedestal, bow at their feet, uh, all of those things. Don't do that. It's not needed, right? Number eight, impartation can take place remotely through a distance. Remember, in the spirit, there is no distance in the spiritual realm. So while we are talking about close association, sometimes uh, you may associate through a, over a distance where uh, you are receiving through their life and through the teaching and through their books or through observing them from a distance. That can also happen. Um, the reason we say that is, when we think about um, Elijah and John the Baptist, this was distance in time. And was, there was no, actually there was no physical association. They were in different time periods. And yet God sovereignly took off the spirit and powers on Elijah and put it on John the Baptist. So there was distance, but God did the impartation. He caused that impartation. And so we're just kind of keeping that possibility open, saying, yeah, if God could do that, then... That means there is no limitation in, in time or distance, physical distance. Therefore, there is this possibility of imparting even remotely, meaning the person could be somewhere else, be listening to this person. That person may never lay hands on you. You may never see that person in physical life, but you can definitely, definitely receive through that person's life whatever God wants to impart to you.
Number nine, impartation cannot be purchased with money. Now, why am I saying this? Because sometimes you may hear some preachers say, you know, you give an offering to my ministry and um, you will receive my anointing, you will receive my grace, you'll receive double portion, whatever, you know. Um, remember, while it's always good to give to God's kingdom, you cannot buy the gift or the anointing or the call of God. Right? You can't buy it. God gives it. God gives it. And um, one example is in Acts chapter 8, verses 18 to 22, and I think we're all familiar with this. When um, Philip is in the city of Samaria, actually, after he preaches, this man, Simon the sorcerer, comes to Jesus, comes to faith in Jesus. Then Peter and John come from Jerusalem. They come to Samaria and they pray for the believers, the new believers, and uh, they receive the Holy Spirit. And um, Simon, who is actually a believer at that point, but he doesn't understand everything, right? He's still learning, still, you know, maybe he still has certain issues to deal with. He offers Peter money. He says, Peter, I'll give you money, and you give me this power that on whomever I lay hands, they'll receive the same thing that's happening through you. Uh, he didn't understand what it was. He just wanted the power. And Peter rebukes him, says, your money perish with you, and you know, keep your money to yourself. Um, you think the gift of God can be purchased with money. So he rebukes him. The point is that you can't buy the gift of God with money. Number 10, a double portion can only be received from God. So when we talk about double portion, that means we are saying, I want more than what the person has who's laying hands on me or is praying for me. So example, in the natural, if I have 1,000 rupees, I can only give you 1,000 rupees. I can't give you 2,000 because I only have 1,000. The other 1,000 you have to get from somewhere else. So you think about it in the spirit. Want a double portion that can only come from God. God can use human agency to pray for you. Uh, he can use human agency to represent what you desire or to demonstrate a portion of what you desire. But when you want a double portion, that has to come from God. And so even Elijah told Elijah, look, you've asked for a very difficult thing. If you see me when I'm taken up, then you'll get it. Now, he gave the criteria saying, you see me when I'm taken up. That means you stay focused on this till I'm gone. But he didn't say how he's going to get it. And if you look at the New Testament, we say, you know, John 3, 34, um, John 3, 27 and verse 34, a, a man can receive nothing unless it's given to him from God. And it is God who gives the spirit without measure. Right? So we look to God. And number 11 is what I mentioned earlier. Impartation can take place across generations. God can take the anointing from one generation, pass it on to two or three generations later. Uh, that can happen. That's something that God does sovereignly. So that can happen. Now, we just have to be a little careful with this, that uh, we don't begin to say things that that is hard to verify. You know, if somebody comes and starts saying, oh, I got the anointing of Jeremiah the prophet, or I got the anointing of Isaiah the prophet, God told me that he has taken the anointing of the prophet Isaiah and put it on me. You know, that's very hard to verify. Uh, we know a little bit about Isaiah from the Bible, but beyond that, you know, how can we verify what somebody is saying? Yeah, so I think we should be careful before people start claiming those kinds of things. Um, best is not to do that. Let God do what he wants, and then we just walk in whatever anointing, grace, and calling that he has placed on our lives. Right? So 
Uh, I had all this not to discourage us from receiving anointing and impartation. I shared this more for that we understand how it actually happens and we're not misled by people. So the most important thing is to develop your own spirit, understand the importance of your human spirit as we learned in this course. And I'm just summing, summing up or uh, doing a quick summary. Understand the basics, the basic things that are involved in developing the human spirit. And you can look at it in the earlier lessons, simply spending time with God, meditating in His Word, praying in the Spirit, speaking His Word, uh, worshipping God. Not those, those, those basic things. Maintain those things. Keep doing those things to keep building up your spirit. Then, Keep developing the faculties of your spirit. Keep getting better and better and better in your, the exercise of your faculties. We talked about that. And then also, let your spirit function, the, what it's supposed to do, you know, in all areas. Let your spirit exercise its functioning in you. Don't suppress it. And then, most importantly, walk in the spirit. That means let the spirit, your human spirit, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, control your soul and body, walk in the Spirit. And of course, you impart to others and let God impart into your life through other people. But to understand how it happens, and most importantly, stay focused on the call of God on your life. Okay? So, any questions on this, please, before we close? Any questions on this? Okay. All right. So I would request all of us to um, just review the notes, uh, it, the lecture notes. It's simple. Uh, it's focusing on just one aspect, which is to developing our human spirit, how we can become stronger in our spirit, uh, just focusing on that. So please go ahead and uh, review the notes. Uh, to conclude, this course, I'll put out one assignment. Um, this week I'm doing some training for our staff. So I'm busy these three days, uh, but uh, I will be uh, able to put out the assignment uh, early next week. And uh, that'll with that, there's one assignment, it says 100 marks. It's a full 100 marks. It'll be based on the notes, the lecture notes. So it's an open, it'll be an open book exam. Um, open notes, open Bible. So you'll just have to complete it uh, to complete the course. Um, and uh, it will serve as a revision of everything we've gone through in this course. And uh, uh, yeah, the most important thing is to take the things we've learned and continue to develop your spirit. Keep growing, Keep stay strong, keep growing. Okay. All right. So I would just like uh, us to close. I just want to request somebody to pray. Uh, thank you for allowing me to do this lecture from the office. I'm not in the Bible college because uh, right after this, uh, we'll go into training here. And so thank you for allowing me to do that. Uh, could somebody please pray and then we will close this lecture. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for teaching us from your word, O oh God. Father, you have chosen each and every one of us, O oh God. Father, we commit each and every one of us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to learn from your word, O oh God. Mm -hmm. 
whatever that you want us to learn, Lord God. Father, you impart it to us in our spirit, Lord God. So each of us will be strengthened and encouraged, Lord God, to flow in that calling that you have called each and every one of us, the gifting that you've given each and every one of us, the grace that you've given each and every one of us, Lord God. Father, help us, Lord God, to stay tuned to your spirit, Lord God. Help us to spend time in your word, oh God, and grow, Lord God, in the knowledge of your word, Lord. You have chosen us, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to always be in your presence. Be in line with what the spirit is calling each and every one of us to live and do, oh God. Father, thank you, Lord God, that you've given pastor, Lord God, all the knowledge to teach us, oh Father God. Father, help us to listen and obey to your word, oh Father God. We commit our entire class, online e-learning and the physical students, everyone into your hands, oh God. Speak to us. Continue to speak to us, Lord God. Lead us in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll see you all soon. Thank you. Bye now.